In this section, you are going to learn all you need to know about finding your way around in Japan and the Japanese addressing system. But we have Google Maps. How hard can it be is maybe what you are thinking right now. And while that is true, let me tell you, I have found myself in situations where either my phone or the internet didn't work and Google Maps was simply not available. Also, if you are coming to Japan to work or to live, you will have to deal with Japanese addresses, be that in a private or professional capacity. And do you know what this is? Japanese addresses seems to be one thing that continues to confuse foreigners when they're coming to Japan. That is why this section is going to teach you all about the Japanese geographic entities and administrative divisions, the different elements of a Japanese address, and last but not least, how to write and how to say a Japanese address if you, for example, want to tell the taxi driver where to go. Let's get into it. The regions are the biggest geographic entity after the national level. As you can see, there are eight regions in Japan and even though I'm showing them to you, they are actually not part of a Japanese address. So it is good to know, but not necessary. The next level of geographic entity are the 47 prefectures in Japan. They are also the first official administrative division within Japan. As you can see, 43 of them are referred to as ken in Japanese. In English, that can be translated to county. So generally, you can refer to them as ken and you can see the kanji here um, for ken as well. There are, however, four prefectures that have a special designation. The first of them is Tokyo. Tokyo is seen as a metropolis and that's why it has the suffix to to signify this special designation as a metropolis. Then there are two that have the designation of Fu, which means an urban area or an urban prefecture. And these are Osaka and Kyoto. And last but not least, there's Hokkaido with the kanji for Do, which can be translated into something like circuit. This was used to show that a prefecture was consisting of different provinces back in the day. A fully written out Japanese address will always include the name of the prefecture. That's why it is good to know these kanji that you can see here because that's when you will know where basically the name of the prefecture ends and the next geographical entity of the address starts. The next geographical entity are the municipalities. As you can see here, there are over a thousand and this is also where it becomes complicated. With regions and prefectures, it was pretty straightforward. One is the bigger unit, then comes the smaller unit. But with municipalities, you have four different kinds. You've got cities, you've got towns, villages and special wards, which all depends on the size of the entity and also some other criteria based on which they can apply for a certain status. And to make things further complicated, cities can even be split into designated, core, special and regular cities. As I said, it all depends on the size and the number of inhabitants and some other criteria. Um, and it's not really important for you to know. However, what can be important to know is the different kanji by which they are classified. So you can see here for cities, we have the kanji for shi. For towns, there's the kanji cho or machi. And then for villages, it's the mura. And for special words, it's ku. And it's really helpful to know these kanji so that when you see an address, you can identify what part of the address um, is currently referred to or where does the city name stop, for example. So um, I would advise you to know these kanji, just be able to recognize them. And it's going to make reading an address a lot easier. Now that you have a good understanding of the different geographic entities and administrative divisions within Japan, let us take an actual look at a Japanese address and the different elements it has. This is what a Japanese address looks like. I've chosen a random address, I think, of a dentist based in um, Tokyo and Shibuya. And um, you can see here how the address can be written in horizontal form or in vertical form. And on letters, sometimes the horizontal form is even broken down into different lines based on these different elements. So with that, let us take a look at the different elements of a Japanese address, of which there are usually five, um, and go through them one by one. So the first one is always the postcode. 
And it usually starts with the postal code mark, which you can see here written, but also on the picture. Um, you will always find it on the Japanese post mailboxes. If you have to fill in a form, this postal code mark is a good indicator to know, okay, this is where I need to put my address. And then comes the postcode, which is usually seven digits. And by digits, you can recognize the cities already. Um, if you know, like Tokyo is 10 to 20, Osaka is 53 to 59. Um, but yeah, of course it afterwards has the name of it, which is um, the prefecture name. Um, and you can see here, this is Tokyo To. If you remember prefectures, there's four different kanji based on which you can recognize, okay, this is indicating the prefecture name. And in this case, it's the To for Tokyo. Then the third part is the municipality. In this case, it is Shibuya City in English. In Japanese, you would say Shibuya Ku, um, which is one of the 23 special wards within Tokyo. Um, and then the next part is a little difficult in terms of how to translate it into English because I've seen people say it's a town, it's called a city district or a neighborhood. And town and city, you know, they already have classifications. Um, that's why I think neighborhoods is the best fitting word for me. Um, so Jingu Mae is a neighborhood within Shibuya city. Um, remember, we're zooming from out to in to the smallest ge identifiable like geographic entity um, within you know, a place in Japan. So the neighborhood we're looking at is Jingu Mae, which is written in the address. And then the fifth part consists of three numbers. And the first number is referring to the Chome. Um, again, you could say this is maybe the neighborhood number. Um, I prefer to just stick to Chome as there's not a proper um, translation for it. And um, so think of like the neighborhood is yet again separated into different districts um, which are identified by these Chome. So here we are in Chome number three. And then within the Chome, you have different blocks. So I think blocks we all know from the US, like, oh, what block is this on or something? But um, yeah, in Japan, it's um, identifying these different blocks, which are basically the areas between streets. And this is also where it gets really interesting and different from Western style addresses, because when you look at Google Maps a little closer, you will notice that the streets don't have names. Here and there, there's a street that has a name, like Takeshita Dori, for example. And in some cities, there are names, but usually the streets don't have names. When we look at a different address, and let me take you to Berlin for a second, um, you can see how the streets all have names. We have Jägerstraße, Taubenstraße, but the spaces between the streets, so here the red bubbles, they don't have a name, they don't have a number or anything. However, in Japan, it's the other way around. The spaces between streets have a number and the streets themselves, they don't have a name. So don't try to look for a street name um, or when you're asking for an address, don't be confused because it's always the block that you're trying to identify and afterwards it would be um, the house number. But before we get into the house number, let me quickly just show you these town block indicator plates that can help you to figure out where in a neighborhood you are. And um, you can see them here on the pictures. They are usually in blue, sometimes also green. I think I've seen some in red as well. And they will always mention basically this neighborhood. So Jingu Mae, or in this case here, you can see Shiba. They will then say the number of the Chome and then the block number that you are in. The last, or I should say almost last part of the address is the house number. As I told you before, I chose a dentist somewhere in Harajuku and um, you can see the address written here again um, in Google Maps now because we want to identify the last unit, right? The smallest unit um, of the address of the place we want to go. And that's why we, going to take a look on Google Maps. There's the dentist. And then if we zoom in, you can, of course, you know this, um, Google Maps shows you the shapes of the different buildings, basically. So if we click on a different building in Google Maps, you will notice that the address changes from 111.1 to 111.6 because it's a different building, different house number. And um, we can see this as we click throughout the different buildings here on Google Maps. Sometimes it's fairly large buildings, um, so the number might not change. But here you can see this is then house number 11, building number 11. Let's see if it's the same in a different block. Um, let's choose maybe number 15. We zoom in a little bit. You can see the different buildings here and you can see the address um, changes to 115, block number 15, house number six. 
and then if we click on the building next to it it changes to 115 15 and let's see the building next to it when we chose this one it's the address 1155 so here you might also be a little bit confused as to why 6155 are next to each other in this order and the reason is um, that buildings were assigned numbers based on when they were built or were in a circular fashion so that's why you often don't find houses in the order like one, two, three, four, five next to each other. Um, and that's why it's also important to know how to figure out the house that you actually want to go to. And um, another way to find the house that you want to go to is also knowing its building name. And you can see this here in Google Maps quite nicely as well. It always has the names of the houses. So not necessarily the number is shown in Google Maps, but the name. And you can also find Biru, which is short for building in the Japanese katakana form. Um, so this will always indicate a building's name. And once you get to the house, then uh, you will be able to identify its house number based on these blue plates. Remember I showed you in the beginning. Um, you can also see it here on the slide. So you will be looking for the house number and you can also look for the building name, which we just saw in Google Maps. So often the houses, they have their names written on, you know, the front door on like a little pole outside of the house, uh, which can help you identify the right building. Um, and the thing about these blue things is just the blue signs that they are not always placed right next to the door. Um, here are some examples where it's right next to the door, but sometimes, especially little houses, they will have it somewhat, you know, on a little wall further outside. Um, sometimes it's really low next to the ground. Sometimes it's a little bit higher. So make sure you look out for the blue plates to identify the right house based on the number. Um, but also look around you know um, that you can find it in the right place and besides the building name um, house number building name it's also good to know the floor that you want to go to because you know Tokyo for example huge skyscrapers many many floors and to have the floor number is helpful and to understand the floor numbers um, I come from Germany and in Germany floor number one is the first floor above street level so I once honestly I got stuck in one of these huge malls because I couldn't figure out how to get out you know was one street level was B1 street level it took me a little bit very embarrassing um, and I want to spare you that so let me just quickly tell you 1F or just 1 is street level in Japan, B1 is the first level underground or below street level and 2F is the first level above street level. So just know this in case you get into one of those big malls and you want to find your way out. And last but not least, it's very important to know that there is this structure to the address that I have just shown you, but of course to every rule there's an exception and it's the same in Tokyo, in Japan. There will be cities which have street names, there will be cities or addresses where you find more than five parts. Um, but always remember you're zooming from out to the smallest unit in. And remember those kanjis that we talked about for prefectures, towns, cities, villages, as they will help you to identify the different parts of the address and to hopefully find your way around or tell your address to someone or leave it on a form. In writing a Japanese address, there is basically a very simple rule. If you write it in Japanese, stick to the Japanese style, as in zooming from out to in. If you're writing it in English style, stick to the English way of showing an address, which is, you know, first the name, and then you go down to the elements until the city or the country. However, if you are in Japan and you have to write an address um, and you want to write in English because you don't know the kanji, you can also apply the Japanese style but write it in the English form. So you could say, you know, the postal code and then you say Tokyo, Shibuya Ku, Jingomai, and so forth. And letters will also get there. Um, but usually we say Japanese, in Japanese, you write it in the Japanese style from the largest geographical unit to the smallest. And when you write in English, then you also use the English style. 
let's look at how you would say your address or tell someone your address by using the example of getting into a taxi and having to tell your address. So usually when you get into the taxi, you know, you would say konnichiwa, arigato gozaimasu, something, you know, just to break the ice, so to say. Um, and then you would maybe say, may I tell you my address so that the taxi driver knows you want to tell him the address. Um, and when you want to say your address, then you should stick to the Japanese format. So you should go from the ku because usually, you know, if you're in Tokyo, you don't have to say again that you're in Tokyo. Of course, if you want to go from Tokyo to Yokohama, then it might be good to mention that. But usually you would start with the word. So in this case, you would say Shibuya ku. Then you mention the city district, which is Jingu Mae. And then you go down to the smallest unit. So you would follow that with the block number um, and then later the house number. Um, what you should know is that in speaking, you only mention, you don't say banshi or go for house number and block, but you just connect those numbers with a no. So we had 1111 as the numbers, if you remember the address. So you would say ichi no juichi no ichi. Um, and by that combination with a no, they will know what these numbers mean. This is just how you speak it. It's a little bit faster. Um, and then as always, it's nice if you add, you know, an onegai shimasu or arigato gozaimasu um, to tell the taxi driver that this is the end of your address. And of course, that you are politely asking him to take you there or her. There's also female drivers. Good job on making it through this section. You have learned that the Japanese address elements are based on the geographic entities and administrative divisions. You now also know that the different elements of a Japanese address relate to the postal code, prefecture, the ward, town or village, the city district number, block, house number, building name, apartment number or floor and the name. You also know that blocks have names and numbers and not streets, so remember not to ask for a street name. You also understand how to write a Japanese address, whether you write it in Japanese or in English, and how to tell someone where you live or where you want to go.